Below the python, on the forest floor, another hunter killer, the tiger snake, prepares a trap for its quarry, a small mouse. Unaware, the mouse blunders round the corner. The snake strikes and misses. Incredibly, the mouse attacks the snake, biting its neck. The snake flings the mouse off and strikes and misses again. But the mouse makes a fatal error and returns to attack. The snake does not miss this time. The mouse lays dying. The entire drama has taken only seconds. Here it is again at full speed. The blue-tongued lizard, lover of logs and damp places. He feeds on ants, termites and other small insects. It looks more like a prehistoric monster than a small lizard when filmed in close-up. Another unusual reptile living in the southwest forest is the giant skink, largest of his kind. He is extremely nervous and spends much of his time listening for strange noises. Although it has frightened the skink, the noise also attracts a mother's attention. This baby joey, greatly daring, has left the pouch and is lost in the bracken. Usually silent, this is his call for help. The wild flowers and shrubs of the southwest provide a rich and varied diet for the animals. The mainland quokka feeds on a tasty morsel. The black-gloved wallaby, like an old lady at a tea party, eats daintily. Under the stands of wild hovia, the shyest of creatures, the tamar, whose keen ear picks up the faint noise of our camera. By now the joey has been collected and is safely back in the pouch, although his troubles with the bracken are not yet over. The mob moves on into the forest, leaving the last careful scout to make sure they're not being followed. At last satisfied, he too disappears into the forest. Hot sand, blue sky, warm water. Western Australia has thousands of kilometers of beach, and many holidaymakers choose Shark Bay near Carnarvon. The very name sounds sinister. Huge fins silently cut the water, and the unsuspecting victim may easily become a meal. But this fin belongs not to a shark, but to a far more friendly mammal, the dolphin. The wild dolphins of Monkey Maya have formed a special relationship with man, free to come and go as they choose. Generations of dolphins in this area daily swim into the beach. The head of a dolphin contains a sophisticated electronic guidance system. Beneath the bony structure of the skull lies a large, well-developed brain capable of sending out impulses directed through a lens and out via the melon-shaped transmitter at the front of the head, a device for beaming signals into the water in front of the dolphin.
It has been discovered that dolphins are capable of interpreting these signals so accurately that they can detect the most minute difference in size and shape. These signals bounce off objects and return to the dolphin, being received along the lower jaw and passed up into the bony structure of the inner ear. There, the brain translates the information as the dolphin constantly evaluates shapes, distance, and time in relation to his surroundings. If you're lucky enough to meet a wild dolphin, don't pat his head. Remember what's in it. Another famous character at Monkey Maya is Ringer, a dog who loves dolphins. One in particular, Puck, is his friend. Ringer happily stands in the water for hours just to be with the dolphins, but they seem to enjoy his company. The dolphins of Monkey Maya first started coming in about 1965. One single dolphin appeared and helpfully herded shoals of yellowtail under the jetty for the fishermen to collect as bait. Since then, many families, or pods as they are called, have made friends with the visitors to Monkey Maya. Always trusting, some have been killed, so the Dolphin Welfare Foundation, a protection society, has been formed to look after them. Further south, down the coast at Yanchep Sun City, a boat from Atlantis Marine Park leaves on a search for a young female dolphin to add to the park's collection. The expedition is headed by Dr. Mick Gale, the resident veterinary officer. Because of the number of dolphins off the Western Australian coast, the park has easily been able to build up its stock. It's not long until the first pod is sighted. place in Western Australia which has no parallel on earth. It is known as the Pinnacles. 
Time, wind and water have created thousands of limestone monoliths like the remains of a long lost civilization that has trapped its inhabitants within the stones themselves. Millions of tiny petrified root systems from a vanished forest. When the last daylight strikes the stones, they become mere shadows from the past or the future. This is the place that truly captures the wonder of Western Australia. Coming up next, a crafty feline is preparing to pounce as Bill Bird's Animal Odyssey studies the stealth and beauty of the killer cats. Then at 7.30 Eastern, view the rhinos and elephants of India. Next week on the Discovery Channel. This is the sinuous dance of the sea snake. We have been so busy avoiding the stonefish that we nearly run into the most sudden form of death the sea can offer. Some species of sea snake are more deadly than the cobra. This one is over three meters long and as thick as a man's arm. Called Hydrophis elegans, it feeds mainly on fish. If this snake decides to turn on our cameraman, there is no way he can outswim it. We know that in this area near Carnarvon, the dugong, an almost mythical sea beast which gave birth to the mermaid legends, can occasionally be sighted in the distance. But we're almost unprepared for what happens next. A mother and calf swim into view on the edge of our vision. Spending nearly all their time beneath the surface, the dugong is very difficult to find and film. Consequently, very little is known about them. As we watch, we can sense the love between the mother and child. Join us for Adventurers, Tuesdays at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific.